So in 2022, as the trade deadline approached on November 1st, a lot of us Jaguar fans were kind of debating, like, what do we need to do? A lot of people were wondering, like, are we going to be sellers? I mean, a week before November 1st came, the Jaguars traded James Robinson over to the New York Jets. And there's a lot of speculation that, hey, maybe Josh Allen is on the move. Uh, but there's also a certain popularity of Jags fans that were saying, no, we need help. Like, we need to bring people in here right now. The Jaguars at the time were two and six. They had lost five straight games by one possession. And it just felt like we needed one more piece to kind of put us over the top in a way. And look, I know a lot of people, a lot of people wanted offensive help, mostly in the terms of pass catching, whether it be wide receiver or tight end help. Uh, I know Hawkinson got moved during the trade deadline. You know, there were some popular names like Chase Claypool, Kadarius Toney, Robbie Anderson. Those were kind of some of the bigger names that were being mentioned. Um, but the Jaguars kind of went outside the box. They went after a guy that a lot of people weren't really thinking about because it's more of a long-term thing, and he wasn't the guy that's going to bring in and then play that next Sunday. And that was Atlanta Falcons wide receiver Calvin Ridley. And the Jaguars pulled the trigger and made a very, very low risk to high reward type of trade. And they brought in the former top 10 wide receiver um, for a – different kind of trade package the Jaguars traded a 2023 conditional fifth round pick that would actually be reduced to a sixth round pick if Calvin Ridley somehow were not in, reinstated and also a 2024 draft pick if he makes the team next year if he if he the, the pick actually turns into a third round pick if he reaches a certain playtime incentive and then it turns into a second round pick if the wide receiver is is signed to a long-term deal now that's not until 2024 so 2023 offseason best case scenario we're missing out on a fifth round pick now the jaguars what they did they didn't want to overpay in the short term uh, like when you look back at the chase claypool trade and you know, the bears really wanted a wide receiver in there and they brought in a chase claypool who didn't really didn't do a whole lot and it was a second round pick the Bears had the worst record in football this year. So that that second round pick literally turned into the number 32 overall pick, which is number 32 overall because the Miami Dolphins had to forfeit a first round pick due to the Brian Flores situation. So when I say number 32 overall, I was expecting a lot of people to say, no, 30, no, it's number 32 overall pick. So that was a little bit rich for a guy that really did not do a lot. And, you know, the Jaguars were looking more long term. They felt comfortable with the options in house. And it actually did turn out pretty good for the Jaguars as, you know, the Jaguars wide receivers and the pass catchers, I think, all exceeded expectations, especially after that trade where we all thought we needed that position so much. Now, why are we bringing up Calvin Ridley on February 15th and 2023? Well, the reason is because today was the official day that Calvin Ridley was able to apply for reinstation into back into the NFL. And... He spent, he spent no time filing for reinstation as he went ahead and did it today. So a couple hours after he was able to do it, he went ahead and did it. And Ridley right now is serving a suspension for gambling. Um, in 2021, he played five games in a season and then took a step away uh, for what was cited as mental health reasons. And then about a month or two later, it, it came up that look he might actually request a trade like i don't it, it didn't look like he was very happy over in atlanta and then a few a couple a week or two after that it turned out that he's going to be suspended for the, the rest of the 2021 season as well as the 2022 season and the reason is because he put down a $1500 parlay on several different nfl games including a game where the atlanta falcons played and you know for that they gave him a big suspension now it was everyone was kind of talking about like look you can there's so many players that get suspended for the crazy for that 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 get like four or five game suspensions for stuff way worse for crimes that if i were to even mention it on the channel i would get demonetized you know but calma really basically gets a season and a half suspension for gambling you know so, so there's that whole debate but now he can apply for reinstation today, which he went ahead and did. 
So what does the reinsta- reinstatement process look I think I've been saying reinstation. What does the reinstatement, I should be saying, process look like? I'm sorry. It was coming out weird out of my mouth. Now, the last time a Jaguars wide receiver was dealing with reinstatement, it was Jaguars legend Justin Blackman. I don't ever. I think he, he applied for reinstatement once, and then he never did again. <laughs> uh, so he's still on the commissioner's ban list. So Justin Blackman didn't work out too well, but he had his own issues. Now, you know, we have the Calvin Ridley thing. Doug Peterson said after the season, we're in his post-season, I guess, end-of-season press conferences that he does expect him to be back for the 2023 season. You know, they've been getting some good word back from Calvin Ridley's camp, and, you know, Calvin Ridley looks excited to be back on the Jaguars. Now, according to John Shipley from Jaguars Report, the last player to get reinstate, reinstated after gambling was defensive back Josh Shaw, who the same time period of reinstatement, he applied the same time too, and he did not get reinstated until March 20th. So that's about six weeks after the Super Bowl. So it very well might be the same situation with Calvin Ridley when it comes to expecting a return. So, you know, we might not hear back from this for four to eight weeks, I would expect. I'm not sure what goes into that process. I know he probably has a bunch of meetings with the NFL, maybe Roger Goodell. You know, maybe there's a bunch of different, you know, meets with counselors. I, I don't, I'm not really sure what goes on in the whole process, um, but I would expect him to be back. And I think he's really, really hungry to actually come back. Um, now, Jaguar fans should be very, very excited for Calvin Ridley. Um, he's going to be 28 years old. He was actually an older player in high school, actually. I think he couldn't play a pro- portion of his senior year because of – the fact that like he was too old. I guess he got held back a couple times. So he'll be 28 years old at the start of the season next year. He will be playing under a fifth-year option. The fifth-year option was supposed to be in play in 2022, but since he was suspended the whole entire year, it's not going to go into play until 2023, and it's $11 million is what he's old, owed directly off the cap. You know, the Jaguars at any point, they can give him a restructure or extend him, but I'd imagine they might want to see him play first before, you know, determining that. Like I said, the reports are that he's in great shape. He's been a fun player because he's been really active on Twitter. He's almost been a part of Jaguars Twitter when it comes to, like, the Jaguars will pull out a win. He'll throw out fire emojis. He'll be liking different tweets. He'll be responding to different Jaguar players. I know him and Christian Kirk have a really good, really good relationship so it's nice to see that he's really excited to be a jaguar on twitter and you know like i said he got traded to the jaguars and they were two and six so he got to be a jaguar fan through the whole entire turnaround maybe it was calvin ridley that sparked the jaguars turnaround probably not but maybe i'll go with that now he's a great route runner he's agile he's very fast i know a lot of people are holding out hope for him but i don't think people really remember how good he was you know, when he was playing last year. I mean, in 2020, his last full season, he played 15 games. He recorded 90 receptions, 1,374 yards, and nine touchdowns. He has a lot of touchdowns over the course of his career. Like I said, he's a really good route runner, and those are really turning into, it's no longer the big body wide receivers that are just outbodying these cornerbacks now it's all about the finesse it's all about the route running it's all about timing between the quarterback and wide receiver so you know that's something that's going to be exciting to see and we've seen what bringing in elite veteran wide receivers do for these young quarterbacks i mean look what aj brown did for jalen hurts how about stefan diggs for josh allen tyreek hill for Tua tonga viola you can even look at deandre hopkins with kyler murray I mean, it's a real benefit when you bring in these veteran wide receivers to come in to an offense, give the offense a real spark and move forward with, you know, with the team looking like that. So it's uh, it's very, very exciting. Um, So we'll see what happens really the course of the next few weeks. You know, I'd expect this to be a four to eight week thing. Um, so yeah. And when it comes to the next few weeks, really not a lot going on in the NFL. There's going to be the combine coming up soon. Um, when it comes to free agency, that's not until early March, but things that the Jaguars can do, you know, at any moment they can give Jawan Taylor or Evan Ingram an extension. They can even rework Josh Allen's deal if they want to extend them long-term because Josh Allen's another guy that's going to be playing on a fifth-year option. 
you know, still plenty of stuff the Jaguars um, can do. So we'll see what happens. Pretty exciting. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are of Calvin Ridley. Like I said, if you don't remember him, man, go pull up his tape on YouTube. He's an excellent route runner, leaves corner, leaves defensive backs on ice skates. Um, really, really fun stuff. So with all that said, thanks for watching. Go Jags.